Bizarre Brain Comics. Hello, Gary here for Bizarre Brain Comics. This is where I like to take a look at some older comics, examine the, uh, well, the <laughs> take a look at the characters and creators, and examine the stories and the art. What I want to look at this time, hmm, you just... From 1975, Charlton Comics, Monster Hunters number one. Of course, this is in keeping with our spooky Halloween month. So, we'll take a little look in the big book of knowledge. Just see what little bit we've got there. Monster Hunters from the Charlton Comics, which is an or and for blah, 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 blah. and <laughs> a horror anthology. I'm trying to say both words together. A horror anthology title from Charlton Comics, and the main character is Colonel White Shroud of the Monster Hunters Club. He is both a participant of and a narrator of these horror monster stories. And they were originally all new stories, but with issue 13, they began to feature uh, stories reprinted from other Charlton titles. And of course, they drew on the talents of their stable of creators primarily Joe Gill and some others uh, for writers and uh, all the other writers they got uh, all the other artists got, like uh, a lot of Steve Ditko but that may have also been from the reprints and stuff but um, uh, Steve Ditko uh, uh, what was his name Howard uh, Wayne Howard and who will take a look at one of his stories here uh, Joe Stanton and, uh, and a bunch of others, many of who, whom uh, names I don't even know. And this is not to be confused, not to be confused with Marvel Comics Monster Hunters, which is a similar but different group. And they were all in the action in all, all of those stories. So, let us join Colonel White Shroud in a thrilling, spooky adventure. Here we have Monster Hunters number one, like I said, 1975. That's a, an interesting cover painting. Yeah, um, in my research... I found that this uh, cover painting was uh, done either by Tom Sutton or Don Newton. So I'm not so familiar as familiar with Don Newton. I guess he did some, if I'm remembering correctly, he did some uh, some of the Phantom. But just based on that, I don't think it's him. I would say, I would say Tom Sutton. But since there's no credits and no signature, you can't be sure. And uh, as I said said the uh, with issue 13 and this one here is issue 13 with a Ditko cover uh, started uh, reprints well it still had a uh, um, Colonel White Shroud lead story in, in this one the uh, the other stories were reprints from other titles and even included uh, 
<laughs> even even including the uh, um, the horror host from the other other titles. Um, and I I like this masthead better, much better than this one. Although the monst the word monsters is a little difficult to read here with with this dark lettering. Uh, the design wise, I like better. Uh, uh, Something not quite so modeled might have been better, but I just this is just too a little too mundane for 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 and then up here in the corner corner box is uh, Colonel White Shroud. And uh, this main story we're going to look at here is features Colonel White Shroud, and it has an introduction uh, an introduction. Uh, which introduces the, the character of Colonel White Shroud, along with another lady who is, uh, from what I understand, a host from a different title, or was, and about this time was introduced in that in that t other title. But she makes an appearance here. I don't remember her name, and uh, and that introduction is is drawn by Joe Stanton, and the main, then the main story featuring Colonel White Shroud is drawn by. Uh, Wayne Howard, who I've talked about before in a, uh, for another one of Charlton's uh, horror titles. And I, for the life of me, I just cannot remember, cannot remember the title of that book. See, but uh, it, uh, but Monster Hunters here, it featured tales of the occult, mad scientists, monsters, ran for, uh, about 18 issues, as far as I can tell, from uh, 75 to 79, featured work by a variety of Charlton co uh, comics creators, largely Joe Gill, uh, Nicola Cutie, or maybe that's supposed to be Cuddy, as writers, and artists Joe Stanton, Tom Sutton, Wayne Howard, and Steve Ditko, among others, as, as I said. <clears throat> and so let us dive in to the world of the monster hunters and here it starts right off with an introduction yes uh, Joe Stanton on and I've talked about Joe Stanton before with uh, uh, that Primus book by uh, um, from from Charlton he did the artwork on Primus and it was like his first uh, uh, major, major work, um, and even as I said, that when I covered that, you can see how how his style quickly evolved, and I, this is the style and stylization for his work that I like best that he used here, and and Primus and E Man and and the like. Um, Later, later on, he did a lot of work for, uh, for DC, and even did the uh, 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 Dick Tracy comic strip for a while. And I like this version of his art better than than what he did for DC. And there's nothing wrong with what he did for DC. He he's a good, solid artist, and I like his work. I just hap happened to uh, find this particular style phase of his his artistic style um, more visually pleasing to me and here uh, yes Countess Von Blood she's here at the Monster Hunters Club meeting Colonel White Shroud and uh, he's just here for a little visit and he gives her a little tour through and you can see the the, the sculptures and the paintings and stuff of on the walls of all kinds of monsters that that uh, one can expect and then here so there's so many things and then he then he starts to recount this story right here the boar's head beast which was drawn by Wayne Howard and remember Wayne Howard was uh, he had been um, an assistant uh, co-worker with uh, 
on uh, with um, uh, Wally Wood and his art and his page layout and 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 the like bears a very strong even his figures and the light lighting and shading shading um, bears a strong resemblance to uh, Wally Wood's work he's not as fine a draftsman as Wally Wood was but I, I do enjoy his work and here he is in the the town of Boar's Head and they talk about the Boar's Head beast he was called here by someone because there's this beast here and it seems to be creating havoc but they don't know what it is where it came from or anything like that so here's the inspector and he's uh, he's meeting here at this the boarding house because here you see him arriving at the boarding house and uh, the old lady who runs the thing she looks like a witch there And, uh, and here's Colonel White Shroud and the, the inspector. They're meeting a place that's some nice uh, background. I mean, really, f the backgrounds are just filled with detail. Maybe even too much. Uh, almost to the point of being distracting. But it's very good draftsmanship. It's uh, fairly tight, maybe a little too tight. And so... He tells uh, tells the thing about the beast and the people have gone missing or what have you. And they go out at night. It only appears on foggy nights. And uh, here's they're out in the foggy night. And I hear hear someone scream, and the beast is after this this lady. Oh my gosh, it's Doreen Purvis. You know this really weird looking looking beastie. And the inspector whips out his gun and takes a shot at the beast. Watch White Shroud uh, warns him against uh, shooting anymore because he might hit the girl. Not to mention whatever else might be downrange. And, uh, or whoever else might be downrange. And so then they continue on and they're looking through there uh, trying to find see where the beast went. And he said, here's this old uh, uh very, very old, dilapida dilapidated, and now unused church. And they, it's boarded up, and they, they get in, and it's, well, it's being, it is being used. And here's a picture of the beast right there. And see some stuff, and they will look around, and look around, and they say, oh, there's someone there in the shadows. It says, I who summoned, old dreadful beast, command ye return to thy rest. Ooh, it's Doreen. That's the... So hold it right there. Oh no, John. They were friends. They grew up together. And then she, they talk with her. And uh, said, oh, she said that she was, they grew up messing around around the, the church when they were little. And she came in one time and she found some uh, something because there was some, old, some cult had been here and used this place in the past. And she wanted to, uh, she discovered that there was was some kind of demon or beast uh, living or existing in uh, in sleep, as they put it, uh, under the town. And uh, she accidentally woke it up, and it was it's underground uh, in the the well systems. And there are several wells around the, the old town, but she doesn't know what well it. it comes from or has come from so dr white shroud has has a plan then a few days later they're at the well this is the last well in town and they've uh, well all this next to the last well in town they've uh, put uh, uh, stopped up all the uh, all the wells except for one in town with steel and said so, so that the, the beast has to come out of the well that last well so that in here you can really, really see some uh, Ditko, um, correction, Wally Wood-esque-ness in his, his dragon. It said, not as lovely as his, but you can really see it there. And said, okay. Then it's, it has to be tonight. The thing will come out tonight. And that evening the beast appears, even though there was no fog. Do you recognize 
she asked me. Do you recognize me? It is I, the one who called you. I can't control him. He's going to kill me. And he charges and he charges. And suddenly, poof, poof, poof. All these bright spotlights right on the beast. Ah, and he just kind of kind of dissolves and melts away. And then they ask, here's another one with the, the, the uh, lighting and stuff. You can really see the Wallywood influence. He uh, said, oh, yes, because the beast only came out at night that were uh, moonless or foggy. When, it was, when any light would be dimmed, you could... Uh, Obviously, this beast would not be, would not like the light. And that was the result. I got a fly buzzing around my face. Um, <laughs> and that was the result. The light, harsh light, destroyed the beast. And that is the end of this story. And okay, then the other stories, I think this is done, drawn by Tom Sutton. It's only a one-pager. Um... Here's a, a real nice one. Uh, Joe Stanton in, introductory panel. For this story, we're not going to get into it, but this is really nicely drawn. This is by Pat Morisi, and he does, he signs its name Pam, basically. But uh, uh, they don't give him any credit, and there's a re reason for that, which I'll cover sometime when I cover Pat Morisi. It's some really, really nice draft, draftsmanship. And that... So that's a short, uh, short one, and here we have Paul Kirchner. Paul Kirchner. This is not as nice as as Wayne uh, Wayne Howard's work, but it's it's adequate. It's a really nice detail on on that handgun, but it tells us tells the story about a Loch Ness monster. This is the story that the cover is based on. It kind of reminds me of uh, Sam Glansman's art. And then, uh, of course, here we have and this one, this number 13, Manta. This is, I don't know who who drew this one. Some of the line, line work makes me think of, uh, of uh, Joe Statton, but other stuff doesn't. So I don't know who drew this one for sure. Maybe it's a combination of uh, Tom Sutton and Joe Stanton. Now this one's definitely Joe Stanton, and this is a ref as a reprint from another title, Joe Stanton. And then this is the one, Joe, uh, Steve Ditko story, which is uh, the one that got the cover. And some some nice artwork, not as good as necessarily as some of the others. Uh, quite adequate. I like the concept of the Monster Hunters Club, and uh, I like that. Uh, Colonel White Shroud is a, a participant in the stories as well as a narrator. That makes me think of uh, like like uh, uh, Dr. Spectre from Gold Key and the like. So that's what I've got for these monster hunters. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. And remember, comics are art.